Today we're going to be talking about ovarian tumor markers as well as the common histological slide findings and buzzwords that you can see in CREOD. You can have your surface epithelial cells, your germ cells, as well as your sex cord stromal cell tumors. Other things would be your non-ovarian primary tumors that present as metastatic disease to the ovaries, but we will not be focusing on that today. In terms of your surface epithelial cells, these are the cells or the single layer cells that cover the ovary or line the cyst immediately below the ovarian surface. Um, your germ cells are your primordial germ cells or your reproductive cells, so thinking of things along the lines of your oocytes. The sex cord stromal cells make up the stroma or supportive connective tissue or your sex cell cord cells like the granulosa cells and Sertoli cells. Non-specific mesenchymal we won't be focusing on today, but these are the very rare sarcomas that can develop from the ovaries. In terms of um, percentage of overall makeup, surface epithelial cells are going to be your most common ones, and these are typically the ones that present at a much later stage, like stage 3 or stage 4, and make up 80 to 85 percent of all ovarian malignancies. Germ cells are going to be your next class in terms of most common, making up 10 to 15 percent cited by some resources. However, other resources cite 20 to 25 percent. Sex cord stromal cells make about 3 to 5 percent, and your nonspecific mesenchymal cells will be less than 1 percent of the overall makeup. In terms of your types, surface epithelial cells can, um, can have serous carcinomas clear cell carcinomas, endometrial type, mucinous types. Our talk won't be focused on Brenner's, but know that Brenner tumors arise from the surface epithelial cells. Most of the time, these are benign, but about 2% of the time, they can be malignant. Germ cells are going to be your dysgerminomas, your teratomas, your yolk sac, mixed germ cell tumors, and you also have rare germ cell tumors as well. Sex cord stromal cells can be thought of as either stromal tumors or sex cord tumors. Your stromal tumors being your fibromas, your thecomas, your Leydig, Sertoli, and your sex cord being granulosa as well as some Sertoli components as well. In terms of your surface epithelial cells, um, these are going to be the most common ones that we'll be talking about today. Remember that in terms of your types, you have them listed here. Serous is going to be the most common as it makes up about 55%. This is thought to arise from the fallopian tube epithelium and has a predominance of CA125 elevation as its tumor marker. Mucinous makes up about 20%. This is the surface epithelial cell tumor type that can also have elevations of CEA as well as CA125. Endometrioid is 15% of your overall makeup. It's thought to arise from the retrograde flow that you can see from the uterus um, endometrium. And oftentimes patients with endometrioid ovarian um, primary cancer may also have some kind of disease in their endometrial. 20% of the time, there's also another primary endometrial cancer found at time of diagnosis. These patients will also have elevations in their CA125 tumor markers. Clear cell is very uncommon rare, making up 5% of your overall epithelial cell tumors. However, this one, it can be related to endometriosis in 25% of its cases. And Brenner's, like I said before, are very rare, and only 2% of all Brenner tumors are actually malignant. In terms of your germ cells, this is the second group that we'll be talking about. These can make up anywhere from 15 to 25% of your ovarian neoplasm, but only 5% of the malignant ovarian neoplasms. Germ cell tumors are most common in young women aged 10 to 30. And among your malignant ovarian germ cell tumors, the most common types are going to be your dysterminomas, as well as your immature teratomas, and your yolk sac tumors, and mixed will count uh, as well. And this will account for 90% of the malignant germ cell tumors. Teratomas are going to be your most common type of germ cell tumor, and they can be divided into four categories. Mature teratomas, otherwise known as dermoid cyst, most of the time are benign, and these account for over 95% of all ovarian teratomas. Malignant transformation can occur 0.2 to 2% of the time in mature teratomas. On histology, these are the... Um, these are the tumors that can arise or contain ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Questions on CREOG may refer to a Rokotansky protuberance on transvaginal ultrasound. This is a finding where you see a solid prominence located at the junction between the teratoma and the normal ovarian tissue. 
immature teratomas are malignant teratomas. They make up less than 1% of ovarian teratomas. However, they are highly malignant. They contain ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, but typically are arranged in a haphazard manner. These are the tumors that typically are graded based off of differentiation, grade 1 being very well differentiated and grade 3 being poor differentiation. Monodermal are going to be your highly specialized teratomas that are make up of, made up of a single cell type. The common one that you may see in Creoxia stroma ovarii, these are the ones that are composed of mature thyroid tissue and secretion of thyroid hormone can result in clinical hyperthyroidism in about 25 to 35% of these patients. Another type of monodermal teratoma that you may come upon is a carcinoid neoplasm. This is primary carcinoid neoplasm of the ovary, which overall is very rare. However, these patients can develop um, carcinoid syndrome about one third of the time. And you'll see the elevation of the 5-HIAA metabolite of serotonin in urine in some of these patients as well. Dystrominomas make up 2% of your overall ovary neoplasms, but are make up 33% of the malignant germ cells. They're common in young women, and they're considered to be malignant, but the histologic atypia degree is very variable, and only about one-third of dystrominomas behave aggressively. These um, patients on histology will have the fried egg appearance. This is where they have large vesicular cells with a clear cytoplasm with a centrally placed nuclei. They also can present with rapid growth, so there may be a question stem referring to abdominal enlargement for these patients. The tumors themselves are produced synctotrophoblastic giant cells, which are what make LDH and ALKFOS. So LDH and ALKFOS can be elevated in patients with dystrominomas. Yolk sac are tumors derived from the primitive yolk sac. Tumor growth is very rapid, and um, these are the tumors that can have elevations in your alpha fetal protein or AFP, and LDH may be increased sometimes. Mixed germ cells are the germ cells that contain two or more mixed type of germ cells, your most common being dystrominoma mixed with a yolk sac. Your rare germ cells include embryonic carcinomas and non-gestational carcinomas. The embryonal carcinomas make up 4% of malignant germ cells, and they resemble the embryonal carcinoma of testes, which is much more common, but they are the most aggressive ovarian malignant neoplasm. These will make HCG as your tumor marker. Non-gestational choriocarcinoma is exceedingly rare. The placental choriocarcinoma, or the GTN, are the more common ones. Typically, incidence of primary ovarian choriocarcinoma that's non-gestational is about one in almost 400 million. Histologically, to differ or differentiate the non-gestational versus the GTN or gestational choriocarcinoma, people can undergo um, DNA testing of the tumor. If you see presence of paternal DNA, that leads you to um, the diagnosis of a gestational choriocarcinoma. These tumors will also produce beta HCG. Um, in terms of your sex cord stromal cells, the best way to think about these is that these are tumors that can arise from three places, either the sex cord or the stromal cells or both. They're the least common out of all types of ovarian tumors, and they typically present similarly to epithelial and germ cell tumors, but the one difference is that a lot of these tumors will also have signs of estrogen excess or androgen excess, which you can see on physical exam. Estrogen excess typically will present as the abnormal uterine bleeding, elevations or increased risk of endometrial hyperplasia or endometrial neoplasm. Your androgen excess will present as hirsutism, acne, male pattern baldness, or menstrual abnormalities in your patient. In terms of pure stromal uh, tumors, the first one we'll talk about is fibromas. Fibromas are most commonly benign, and they account for 4% of all cases, and they typically present in postmenopausal women. There's really no hormonal side effects, meaning no um, side effects of excess estrogen or androgen that will present. These patients if any, um, will be the ones to present with Meg syndrome. Remember, Meg syndrome is a triad of benign ovarian tumor with ascites and pleural fusion. Typically, will resolve after removal of the fibroma. Sometimes you can see elevation in CA125. Another pure stromal tumor is your thecoma. This will also present in postmenopausal women, typically is unilateral, and these patients will have signs of estrogen excess. Estrogen excess will show up as endometrial hyperplasia, which can present in 15 to 20% of cases, and endometrial carcinoma in 25% of the cases. Most of the time, the thecomas will act in a benign nature. 
Your pure sex cord um, tumor that we'll talk about next is granulosa. This is the most common type of ovarian sex cord tumor. Um, they have a bimodal distribution in terms of age in the sense that there is a adult and juvenile set, subtype. On histology, these are the tumors that typically will present with call Exner bodies. And they're, um, the patients can present with signs and symptoms of excess estrogen. Um, these will act more malignant, and these can produce inhibin, AMH, and sometimes CA125 as well. Sertoli cell tumors, these are very rare, typically present in your second to third decade of life. A third of patients will present with signs of virilization or androgen excess. Typically, AFP and inhibin will be elevated. And sometimes people with putz jaeger syndrome will be seen to be predisposed to developing Sertoli cell tumors. In terms of the histology, the kind of common ones that we'll talk about are the um, first, the dysterminomas. These are the ones that present with the fried egg appearance. You'll have an um, area of clear cytoplasm, um, which is a glycogen filled cytoplasm, and then a centrally placed nuclei. Yolk sac tumors will have the Schiller Duval bodies, which are invaginated papillary structures with a central vessel located here in the center of the picture. Granulosa cell tumors are the ones that will have call exner bodies, which are tumor cells arranged in sheets, punctated with small follicle-like structures.